Uncle Joe here. Today we'll be taking a look at Intercept Race by Compass Games, designed by Gregory M. Smith. This is a solitaire game where you take the role of a German fighter pilot trying to stave off waves and waves of American bombers bombing during the daytime. What we will be doing is that we will be playing the extended example of play that appears in the rule book and it covers pages 17 and 18. So, on to the video. Maestro Pancaldi. So it is July and our pilot is Oberleutnant August Mann. And here you see the pilot and crew status chart, also known as the Dress Up Doll. And August Mann has the rank of Oberleutnant. And I know that because I'm an expert at German uh, Luftwaffe insignia. Well, not really. It's simply because the backs of the counters tell you the rank. And at this time, he is a double ace with 10 kills. That is eight B-17s, a Spitfire, and a P-47, which he has shot down. He has been awarded the Iron Cross first class, as well as the Iron Cross second class. And he has been awarded his first wound badge. In addition, he has received the Honor Goblet, also known as the Eden Pokal. This was a silver cup given to pilots that had proven themselves with an aerial victory. He had accumulated five experience points which he used to purchase the following skills. Air combat maneuver for four and with the remaining skill point he purchased reflexes. His current prestige level is five which is important in order to qualify to fly certain aircraft. And he's flying a Messerschmitt BF 109 G6 R4 which requires a prestige level of three but he has five. And he is based in Bernay, France. And he's assigned to the first group in of Jag Geschwader 27. And his starting base was determined by rolling 18 with a 20-sided die on the base assignment table. And that determined his unit and the aircraft that is available, as well as his starting base Bernay. We see that our aircraft has unlimited uh, machine gun ammo in its cowling. Three points of ammo for its forward cannon in the air screw hub and three points of ammo in the underwing gondola's forward cannon. And in addition to our ammunition we also have a wingman which will be flying beside us and we represent that by placing this BF-109 counter in the wingman status present box. We start by rolling for ray target and weather. We roll 2d6 on the July 43 raid chart table. The result is a 6, so there's a raid coming in on Castle. And we roll 2d6 on the weather chart, and the roll is a 4. So the weather is good, and we place the marker in that box. Now we check the aircraft target chart, that's A3, and it reveals that the raid is composed of B-17s with P-47s as escort. And in July of 43, the bombers are automatically B-17s, and raids to castle are escorted. Next is takeoff, and we move our aircraft to the target endurance box. We move the marker on the aircraft display mat from the hangar, to the takeoff box and from there to the Ruhr Endurance box. Let's take a look at the information in that box. As this box has the bomb symbol on the Messerschmitt 109 chart, 
The B-17s have not dropped their bombs yet, and they are on their way to the target. And this means that there's a possibility that any bomber hit in the bomb bay will cause a detonation. And now we go to the next step. We look at the interception chart, B1, and roll 2D6. And the roll is an 11. We are up sun, and we will attack the formation out of the sun. And this gives us a distinct advantage. And now we have to make a critical decision. As the bombers are escorted by P-47s, do we dive through the P-47s and go straight for the bombers? Or do we go after the escorts first? And this is a very difficult choice to make, but duty called. So we will attack the bombers first and then risk the escorts after we get a pass at the bombers. But first we have to check to see if we run into a YB-40 instead of a B-17 because it is July 43 and we consult the notes section and this specifically is note number two. So we have to roll 2d6 and only on a result of 12 will we run into a YB-40. But the roll is a 10 so it is a normal B-17F. And out of the sun die result gives us the opportunity to attack a B-17 starting at medium range and fire first. And at this time I will not instruct my wingman to attack the bomber he can watch my back. And given that there are still bombs on board the B-17s, we will aim at the airframe. And in this game we have to designate which part of the B-17 we will attack. We can attack the port wing, the starboard wing, or the airframe. So it's time to draw a card. So we place our aircraft counter in the medium range box here in the bomber combat display. And we draw a combat card. And we drew combat card number 29. And the result is a DE. We have shot the bomber down with a lethal burst. And the bomber does not fire back because in this rare case we shot first. Normally, combat is simultaneous. Now we note the ammo expenditure. We spend one point from each of the forward cannons. Now we are required to engage the escorts, but first we will instigate the bug out rule and try to get away as per rule 7.110. So we roll 1d6, and on a 1 or 2, we are able to get away. But the roll is a 6, which means that we have to engage the P-47s. So we place our aircraft counter sideways on the fighter target chart, B-11, to denote that we are disadvantaged, with the P-47 counter facing us because we attacked the bombers first. So now we are faced with three choices. We can perform a standard maneuver, either a tight turn, which gives us two position changes since the BF-109 is an agile aircraft, or a barrel roll, which reduces our hits by two. But the disadvantage of this is the 12 firepower factors the P-47 will get to hit us before our turn takes effect. Or if we barrel roll, we will have two less hits but will still be disadvantaged. The second option is that we can draw a combat card declaring the use of the defensive text and hope it's a good one. And the third option is that we can draw a combat card and call our wingman to help us get out of the fix we find ourselves in. And this option, of course, becomes better once the wingman is experienced enough to have bought some skills. So, we decide to pull the tight turn and use our air combat maneuvering skill. Next, we conduct three rounds of combat against the escort. And we are disadvantaged and the P-47 draws first. So we draw the next card and we draw card number four. P-47 has a firepower of 12. And in the 12 column, that's five hits. And the hits are determined on the fire damage chart. That's B6. And we roll two dice. We have a black die. That will be the tens result. And the white die, the ones result. The first roll is a black one and a white two, a 12. And that's a port 
wing result and we place a damage marker on the top box of the port wing damage cone. Now we roll for the second hit and it's a 33 airframe hit. Our aircraft has three boxes on the airframe column. So we place a damage marker on the topmost box of the airframe column. And if we accumulate three airframe hits or three wing hits of any kind, our aircraft will be destroyed. Now we resolve the third of five hits, a 55, another airframe hit. So now we have two airframe hits, one more, and the aircraft will be destroyed. Now we roll for the fourth of five hits. A 25 port engine, because this is a single engine aircraft, that result defaults to an engine hit. And we place a damage marker on the top box of the engine hit column. And notice that this will have an effect that speed will be reduced by two. So now we resolve the, now we would resolve the fifth hit, but because we executed a tight turn. Now our position improves by two and we are now advantaged. And now comes the initiative phase. So our advantage may be short lived, but at the moment we are facing the P47 counter and it is turned sideways. So it is the end of the first combat round and the last thing that we do is to check initiative and the initiative chart B12 is checked and one D6 is rolled for each aircraft and speed and other modifiers are added or subtracted to give a final result. So we roll a four, we add 18 for our speed. Originally it was 20 minus two for the damaged engine, plus two because the aircraft is agile, plus one because we have the aircraft combat maneuver skill and plus one because our aircraft has the MW50 boost feature for a total of 26. Now the P47 rolls. It rolls a five, which we add its speed of 21 for a total of 26. So we're even and we see the initiative chart. It says with a net differential of one to two, but zero to two would also be covered. So there is no change in positioning. And now we get to attack and we are advantaged and we attack with 16 firepower factors. So the P-47 will go defensive. So we draw the next combat card and it's card 38. We have 16 firepower factors and that results in five hits. So now we draw a card for the P-47. We consult the defense result a Cuban 8. So the P-47 avoids a hit and improves its position by 1. Note that the uh, extended example of playing the rulebook says a Cuban 8 and avoids 1 hit and improves its position by 2 instead of 1, which is how the card and all Cuban 8 cards read. So we're going to proceed as stated in the card. So instead of improving the position by 2, it will be by 1. So that means now that both Interceptor and P-47 are neutral. Now we proceed to resolve four hits on the P-47. We roll two dice with the black die acting as tens and white die acting as ones. The first roll is a 25, which is port engine. But again, because the P-47 has only one engine, it is treated as an engine hit. So that first hit is placed in this box that reads engine armor. And what that means is that the armor around the engine absorbs the hit. The second of four hits is a 34, a tail hit. So we place one damage marker on the tail damage column of the P-47. The third of four hits is a 43. That is a hit in the rear guns. But this is treated as no damage because the P-47 has no rear guns. So now we roll for the fourth and last hit. The roll is a 45 starboard wing. And we mark the hit. And that's it. And we have been unable to inflict critical damage. And the P-47 has been able to turn the tables, at least back to a neutral position. 
So now we go to initiative at the end of the round. We roll a 1 plus 18, that is our speed, plus 2 because we have an agile aircraft, plus 1 for the aircraft combat maneuver skill, and plus 1 for our MW50 feature, and our total is 22. So now we roll for the P47. And if you follow the extended example of playing the rule book, now the roll is a 5, but we will change it to a 6. And that is because when the P47 played uh, the card for defense, uh, the result that appeared in the rule book had him improve his position by 2, but there's no such card, Cuban 8 card, with uh, an improved position by 2. It improves the position of the aircraft by one. So to get to the same place that the rule book will continue, we will have a six rolled with 1d6. So it's six plus 21 is a total of 27. So the net differential is five. The P47 has 27 and we have 22. The P47 wins the initiative and gains two positions. So if we do nothing, the P-47 will be tailing us. So this is the time now to use our reflexes skill. And this kind of skill you can only use once per sortie. So we play it here in the skill usage box. And what that means is that instead of gaining two positions on us, the P-47 only gains one position. And now we are disadvantaged instead of being tailed. And of course, being disadvantaged is better than being tailed because there you take a free tail hit when the P-47 shoots again. And when tailing and we shoot, of course, we get a bonus additional tail hit on top of any other hits. But now we are disadvantaged. And we decide to use the wingman option. So we will use the wingman text of the card that we draw. But first, the P-47 draws a card. And the card drawn is card number 49. And the P-47 has 12 firepower factors. So it's five hits minus one hit for our aircraft combat maneuver skill for a total of four hits. And we draw card number 39 and we check the wingman section and it reads attacks with 24 firepower factors and now we resolve the p-47 hits on our aircraft which are four. First hit a 12 a hit in the port wing so now we move our damage marker there to the second of three boxes the third box means that the aircraft is destroyed now we roll for the second of four hits 13, a hit in the starboard wing. And that's the first hit in that area, and we mark it accordingly. The third of four hits, a 66. That is a fuel tank hit. And we have to roll 2d6 to determine what happens with that fuel tank hit. And the roll is a six, only a leak result. So... We were lucky there. Now to the fourth and last hit, a 43 rear guns hit. And this has no effect because our aircraft does not have that system. We have taken a lot of damage, but now it's our wingman's turn to help us out. And he attacks with 24 firepower factors. So we flip a combat card, and this is card 59. And the result on the 24 plus column is Defender Eliminate. And the P-47 is destroyed. Thanks, wingman. Promise, no more wingman jokes. With all that damage we have sustained, it's time to go home. So, as we noted previously, the weather is good, and we will roll 2d6 for our landing roll. And there will be a plus one modifier because our engine is damaged. And the roll is a 9, modified to a 10, and we land safely. And we chalk up a bomber kill, the wingman chalks up an escort kill, and we lose a sortie to repair the BF-109. And 1 is added to the number of sorties.
completed. And that concludes this extended example of play video of Interceptor Ace. So I hope this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.